These are dextrose. What is it meant to do? And you, tell, you wouldn't want one of them now. Maybe I do want it for my video. Yeah, they look old. They look old, bitch. Put it in your mouth and just suck it. <laughs> Hello, this is Japanese Dumpling, aka Haruki, and welcome back to my Celtic Playground. I want to start off by saying Happy New Year's, everyone. I know it's been a bit of a shit year, and not gonna lie, 2021. I don't have hopes for her. Did I stutter? You know, new year, new me, new year's resolution. I don't have one because I don't plan on changing. So in my previous video, I did want to do a story time. If you haven't watched it, go check it out. To those who have seen it, we all know that ended fucking miserably. <laughs> Jesus. <coughs> oh my God. And I, oh. I was just a mess. Let's say it together. Mm -hmm. So today I'm going to be doing a story time video. Buckle your seatbelts, kids. It's going to be a long ride. As you can tell in the title of the video, my story time is about the time I woke up at the bus stop standing up. And it all started with a day where I went in for a trial shift at a bar in London. It was a Japanese bar. The pay was like 15 pounds an hour, insane. I go in for a trial shift, and at the time I was working full time also. I couldn't finish off too late since I had to go into work the next day, not be too tired. Sorry, just a second. I'm hungry. <laughs> Bitch, gotta eat. So as I was saying, I would go into this Japanese bar, it was, I couldn't even locate it, there wasn't any sign, you had to go down these like stairs, so it was like an underground bar, go in maybe around like 9 o'clock and I am advised to get changed, like to choose a dress from their dressing room, and I'm like, what do you mean wear a dress? They wanted me to dress up, look pretty for new customers that were going to come to this bar. The job description was to sit with the customers who were coming in for a drink, make their drinks and drink with them. So it doesn't sound too hard, right? And me, obviously, loving alcohol, I was like, I can't fucking clip my fingers. And I was like, okay, okay. And the more you drink, the more money you earn. A dream job or what? But the part I didn't anticipate was these customers that were coming in were all Japanese males in their late 40s, even like late 50s. And they were all like coming in in groups. So basically, you're paid to sit there, make their drinks, look pretty and get drunk before you ladies in particular, judge me. Yes, I did that. And you would do it too for a check. I get changed into this like black dress. I even have to change my shoes. I was wearing like boots at the time, but they wanted me to wear the heels that were also in the dressing room. So I'm like, fully kind of like soft glam. And honestly, nothing dodgy was going on, you know, these men weren't trying to touch me up, fill me up or anything. And if they were to. Uh oh. There was um, like a karaoke box within the bar as well and I was like encouraged to sing with the customers, just like keep them entertained and I didn't mind it, I love karaoke, I'm Japanese. I love that shit. The night is going quite well. I'm basically getting paid to be drunk and just make drinks, which isn't too hard. They just <laughs> kept bringing over champagne. I'm just necking it left, right and center. Come to the end of my shift, me being the functioning that I am. 
I asked if I could stay longer and go sit at a different table. That's when everything started going downhill. Oh, I need a sip. I've already had a good few drinks. I'm feeling tipsy, I'm feeling good. And she's sat at a different table, still necking drinks. It must have been maybe around one o'clock and everyone is starting to leave, like all the girls, the customers starting to leave. It was also the end of the night for me. I collect my check, which was maybe around 80 pounds and make my merry way home. I spot myself. A store that was on the other side of the road opposite the bus stop, they were still open. So she goes in and gets a deal of two samosas for seven pounds. Two samosas, seven pounds. I get my samosas, my bus is calm. I get on. Next thing you know, she's standing at a bus stop. My journey was meant to be, it was around from Tottenham Court Road, from around there to Whitechapel, and because it was a night bus, it was only around to maybe take like 30 minutes. Tell me why. I am staring at Stratford McDonald's. <coughs> Open my eyes. <coughs> I'm not gonna lie, it was one of my most confusing moments in London. <laughs> Looking at all the shop signs, Stratford, Stratford, Stratford. Dark, nobody's around. I check my phone, 3% battery. I come to the realization of, fuck, I slept on the bus, passed out, missed my stop, and managed to get off without waking up. So at this point, I'm like, shit, do I have my bag? Look at my bag. My samosas are gone. Oh my god. And alongside my international card, which proves the right for me to live in the UK, also the cash that I'd earned that night. I'm sorry, this is so ridiculous. Where are my samosas? Ah! I'm looking through my bag. Is this a sick joke? No, Chor, you're a clown. I'm not a clown. I'm the whole damn circus. I was on 3% battery, but I did manage to call myself an Uber. I did get home. The whole blame is on myself. Whoever took my samosas and my cash and my BRP card. I get where you're coming from. I also have that what's yours is mine mentality. So. Bon appetit! <laughs> Much needed cigarette break. Mm. Three, two, one, action. <coughs> I didn't do drama at school, alright? Can you tell I did? I got distinction. Mm. I was bo oh. ah. I was born for the camera. Bitch. <laughs> Why?